Hello. This is a short documentary on the use of our new Losi LaserNut U4. I purchased this as a birthday present for my son, but after I had purchased it and before I had given it to him, I began reading on some forums and observing some YouTube videos where numerous people were reporting problems with this vehicle. It's only been out for a few months, and they are reporting uh, drive front drive shaft breakages, rear drive shaft bearing disintegrations, uh, diff, diffs getting chewed up, wheel nuts falling off, uh, and they were suggesting that this is a systemic issue as a result of an under-engineered vehicle, that the drivetrain just isn't capable of running uh, the, the motor and 4S power that, it, that is delivered to it. So with that concern, I contacted my dealer, and he was kind enough to offer me an exchange for something else if I wanted. And he even told me the number of them that he had sold and the number of problems reported. And there were some. So I thought about it, though, and we really like the way it looks and we like the geometry of it. And we thought for the type of terrain we're going to be running it on, which is on my property, and it's fairly benign terrain, off-road, but fairly benign, that we would like to see if this holds up. And when we looked at the Losi advertisement on their website, it, it, inst it indicated to us that it is designed to handle more intermediate to advanced type of, of riding. For example, here's a short 20-second excerpt from one of Losi's promotional videos. As you can see, they are indicating that this is engineered to handle that kind of 20-foot 20, 20 jumping. And there's even a, there's even a um, quote on their website that says, whether you are hitting the rocks or getting huge air or just wide open, the three millimeter chassis just keeps asking for more. And I thought, well, we're not gonna be getting huge air. I'm not gonna be getting 20 foot air. I'm not gonna be hitting rocks, uh, at least not on purpose. So I think for the terrain we're gonna be running, we should be all right. We should, I wanna see if it holds up. So I decided to go with a 4S, excuse me, a 3S LiPo battery, Spectrum Smart Battery 3S, 500 milliamp, 50C. And I changed out the pinion gear to the factory recommended and included 14 tooth pinion gear. Uh, so that will reduce the torque a little bit. And we're going to run 3S on it. So that should reduce some of the stress that is delivered to these components. And what I would like to do is every time I go out and run it, I want to take a video of it and take a short excerpt from that video so that you can see what type of terrain it's being run on, how it's being used. And we'll see how long we can use it in a kind of an intermediate, uh, beginner to intermediate kind of environment just to see if indeed there are some issues that it can't even withstand uh, what many would consider not abusive. So far I've run one battery pack through this on smooth in a smooth paved parking lot just to see how it runs and it ran really well. I got 45 minutes out of that uh, 3S 500 milliamp LiPo. It ran great. I checked the wheel nuts afterwards. They were still tight. Of course, the wheels never left the ground. It was smooth parking lot, but I was very happy with the way it ran, the way it handled, uh, the speed that it had at 3S. I didn't do a speed test, um, but it sufficient enough. So what we're going to do is use it out on the train in our property, and we'll document this, and hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have an idea of it can, if it can hold up to even moderate use. So I want to thank you for tuning in. Watch the rest of this video, and we'll see what it does.
what we have is a persistent clicking that seems to be coming from the drivetrain. It was very faint when the vehicle was new, but it seems to be getting louder. And I don't know if it's anything that will result in a problem down the road or if it's the normal function of the car. But I know it's not coming from the front or rear wheel bearings. It's coming from the drivetrain, either the front or rear dif differential. And I'll see if this microphone can pick it up. Well, we decided to pull the front differential out to try to determine what that clicking noise is. I thought perhaps it might be the pinion gear bearings, but I pulled those out, there's two of them, and they both seem to be fine. But what I did notice was that there was a lot of movement in this diff back and forth, and the gear mesh was, was pretty loose. And when I pulled this uh, bearing off on the ring gear side, there was only one uh, spacer, or what is it called, shim. And I thought, well, I might be able to shim that up and get a little bit better gear mesh. So I ordered some of these uh, shims from A Main Hobby, 13, 16 by 0.2 millimeter, which is, I believe, the same size that's in there. And I stuck one more in behind this uh, ring bearing. And that actually tightened things up. And I'm just in the process, I re-lubed it here, some new lubricant on there. It was actually sufficiently lubed from the factory, which was good to see. And when I tighten it up, I'm gonna put the screws in. It's, there was a lot of play, click, 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 when I went back and forth. But now when I put that other shim in, it seems pretty smooth with a lube in there. I don't hear that clicking back and forth. There isn't the lateral play in the diff. And, uh, and it doesn't seem too tight. It still spins very freely. I don't feel the gears crunchy or anything, but that play is definitely gone. And we're gonna reassemble and see if the clicking noise hopefully is gone as well. All right, now that we got the gear mesh for the, the front pinion and ring gears sorted out, uh, we ran a battery pack through it and it doesn't seem to be clicking anymore. Everything seems to be smooth, check it out. battery pack through and today we noticed that both the right and left uh, front drive shafts were bent. The vehicle did sustain a bump on the left side, left tire, which initiated a, a barrel roll and that could have been the cause of the left front drive shaft. Uh, but I didn't notice it until several battery packs later that it was bent so I can't say for certain. But I don't know how the right front drive shaft got bent but they both are slightly bent. Here is the uh, left one, which is the worst of the two. Just trying to bend this back a little bit to shape. Well, got it about as straight as we can get it. better. It's not perfect, but should work. All right, we got both axle, uh, both drive shafts straightened out. Here's the original one that was bent that I noticed initially, left front. It's better. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just barely made it again. Hello again! I think this is a good time to bring this video to a conclusion. Since I started this video, over a month has passed and we've run over 20 battery packs through it, over 20 operational hours, and the low-sea laser nut has not imploded. It's still running. And that was the intent of this video, to see how the low-sea laser nut could withstand light to moderate use. And I think it's done quite well. The We had two Issues emerge, as you're aware. The front differential uh, was clicking, and the clicking was getting louder and louder, and so I wanted to address that. And But that really wasn't a durability issue, and to me that's more of a quality control issue. It came like that from the factory. The gear mesh between the pinion and ring gear and the front differential was not set up properly. Uh, we purchased some shims, and we're able to correct that, and the clicking went away. Now, I, I don't know if it would have caused any problems down the road if we didn't address it, but we addressed it, solved it, and the vehicle's supposed to come ready to run, and maybe this was just an anomaly, a one-off. Someone at the factory forgot to put an extra shim in there. So that was, uh, that was addressed. But we did have the, an issue with the, both the right and left front drive shafts. They got bent. And I can't say whether or not it was warranted because I think it might have happened when I wasn't out there. My children were using the vehicle and I, they told me they had a rock. And I didn't notice the drive shafts were bent until several battery packs later. So I don't know if that was uh, an earned rightful bend or not, whether it was warranted or not. I don't know if the drive shafts are a weak point, but they did bend. I was able to straighten them out fairly well. Uh, they're still not perfectly straight. I would like to replace them with straight ones once uh, the drive shafts become available, but according to Horizon Hobby's website and some other suppliers, it looks like those aren't going to be in the supply chain until January of 2021, so we'd have to wait a few more months. So if one did break, the vehicle would be uh, out of commission if we were going to replace it with factory parts. But they just bent, we straightened them out, and apart from those two issues, there really haven't been any other problems. Uh, we've been running it, as you can see, light to moderate use. We haven't been ripping it, we haven't been bashing it, but on th at 3S, with the factory in included 14 tooth pinion gear, light to moderate use, it's, it's held up, I think, quite nicely. Uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube of people ripping these and bashing them and, and uh, using them a little bit more you know, probably the way they were intended to be used. And you can watch those videos to determine if that's the type of uh, usage you want to get out of it and whether or not it will withstand that. But for light to moderate use, like we've been using it, it seems to be, uh, it seems to be fine. We're happy with the purchase. We're going to keep running it and maintaining it. And if something breaks in the future, I'll try to update this video with a link so that you can see what happened. But until then, we're just going to keep enjoying it, running it. And uh, hopefully this video uh, was helpful for you if you're trying to determine whether or not this vehicle is something you'd like to purchase and whether or not it can withstand even moderate use. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. I want to thank you for watching and God bless.